the 90 degree angle is indicated, right? So here, our 90 degree angle is indicated, there is also indicated. That is a clue that you must use the original theorem one. Line from center, perpendicular to court, not the converse. So for this question, don't think about the converse because the 90 degree angle is provided, okay? So the first question, you also have to use common sense when you are answering the questions, right? Don't be scared because you saw the diagram. You must have a positive attitude. You should not be scared because you saw the diagram, right? Because I know that some of you, the moment you see the, the diagram, your brain shuts down straight away. That, that should not be the case, okay? So don't be scared because you saw a diagram. So here, if you read the, the question, RS is 48, so the distance from there all the way up to there, that's 48. Okay? Then OP is equal to 7. So let me use blue here. So that distance there is 7. Okay, you might not be able to see properly because the distance is too short. Then TU is equal to 40. So that's 40 there. Okay? Then 2.1.1 says determine the radius of the circle, right? Now, by observation, how many uh, radii do we have by observation? Huh? Listen, just by looking, do you see any radii? No. The answer is a no. But does it mean that the circle doesn't have a radius? No, it does not. Right, so, so for this question, can I have your attention? For this question, you might have to do like a construction of a radius. Okay? So you can join specific points to form your what? Radius. So if I join O to S, I can have a radius. O to R, I can have a radius. Then O to U, another radius. O to T, another what? Radius. So I can end up having four of them. Right? So each one of those four, each one of those four is our radius. Now, based on the information which is given, right, it is much better to either calculate OS as your radius or OR as your radius because we don't know the length of OV. Okay, even though we know TU, but we don't know the length of what? OV. So, in my case, I made a decision that I'm going to use triangle S. O P, okay? Triangle S O P, okay? But before I do that, I need to know what is the length of P S, okay? O P is given. I need to find what? P S. So to find P S, so we start with 2.1.1. So P S is going to be equal to half of R S, okay? And the reason here, is the theorem one line from center perpendicular <laughs> to court. Okay? So what this means is PS is going to be half of 48, which is what? 24 units. Okay? Then, then this is this is 24, that's 7 there. So I can now find OS, right? So I can write here and say in triangle SOP, or whichever way you want to name it. Okay, let me name it as OPS. Okay? Right? So in that triangle, because remember, I joined point O to S, because this is geometry. Generally, when you write an examination, we give you two diagrams. One diagram is for the question paper, the other diagram is for the diagram sheet where you can do all your stuff there in terms of working out. So for me, my working out is on the diagram on the board. So you can see that I have joined point O to what? To S to form my what? My radius there. So that's by construction. You don't, okay, if you wanna write it down there, join O to S to form what? Radius what? O S, you can do that. But there is no mark for that. 
So in triangle or PS, now it's important again to specify the triangle that you are dealing with so that it can be easier for me if I'm marking your work or someone else if they are marking your what? Your work. Identify the what? The triangle. So that it's very clear, right? Because someone might use a different triangle there, so make it clearer for anyone who will be looking at your work. So please be aware that this is not the only triangle that you can use to get the answer. You can also use uh, OPR as well. Okay, that would be your choice. So here I'm going to say OS squared is equal to OP squared plus PS squared. You see it's Pythagoras. Okay, now I need to calculate. So OP is going to be 7 squared. That PS is going to be 24 squared. I'm going to carry on here. Right, so that will give me 49 plus. This is 5 what? Okay, so you get 5 7. So if you add the 2, you get 6 2 5. So OS is going to be 25. Therefore, the radius will be equal to 25 units. Okay? So before you solve for OS, you have to like save this. Yes, so you can step that as I said. Or you can show it on the diagram. There are two ways. Either you show it on the diagram or you can stay that. So in my case, I showed it on the diagram that I joined point four and what? For point A. Generally, for a question like this one here, there won't be any map given for like that setting or showing on the diagram. But it just helps whoever will be marking your way to see how you solve the what? The problem. Yes. Okay, it's a good question now. You see, I'm going to try and avoid a situation where we give you a question on geometry, where we only give you one diagram on the question paper. We need to we have to give you a diagram sheet, a separate di uh, diagram sheet where you can do your working out and all that stuff. Okay, so we'll give you two diagrams for the same question. One on the question paper, the separate one for the answer sheet. Yes. Well, finding PS as one mark, the statement is one mark. Using the term of Pythagoras as one mark. So maybe four marks. Okay, allocated four marks. All right, any question? Any question? Yes. Okay. Can you specify which triangle will be associated? Be more specific. Because see, as long as as long as O R is equal to N, hey, can you have one lesson? We have, we have one lesson, please. If you want to have a conversation, the door is open. Right? Or R is equal to four S. The fact that we have got those two sides that are both red and they are equal means triangle R O S is most likely to be what? I source them. I'm using the word most likely. Okay? Because I don't want to tell you that it's isosceles. Because that, that, that will cause us to. How can I prove that it is isosceles? Because this is geometry. So you can have to prove that it's what? It's isosceles. But it's most likely to be what? Isosceles. Because there are two sides that are what? Equivalent. I hope I have to answer. So 2.1.2. So I'm going to 2.1.2. I'm going to need this diagram to carry on. So allow me to just. Go to the next page. So I want to calculate the length of OV. So OV is from here. So it's from here to there. And you too. Today is your last one. If you can one, have a conversation, my lesson like that, one of you has to move from there. Right? So OV is from here all the way up to there. Okay. Now the good thing is, 
I already know the length of my radius. So all T is a radius, all U is also a what? It's also a radius. So first thing there, when I go to the next page, I'm going to specify. So this is 2.1.2, that all T is equal to all U is equal to all S, all U, they are all equal to all R because they are radius. Okay? That is important to state so that you make it clear that you know what's happening. Right? Then the next thing is I can go to my diagram and label the length. But in this case, I made a decision as to which triangle I want to use to calculate all of this. I'm going to use all T. So this is going to be 20 what? 25. Obviously, that's what? 25. Okay? But I'm not told the length of VT. So I need to determine the length of what? Vt. Now to determine that, I'm going to do exactly what I did here. So I'll say, so Vt or Tv is going to be equal to half of Gu. And the reason, line from center, line from center perpendicular to call. Okay, so that will be half times Tu, which is 40. So you end up getting 20 units. Then, in triangle, OTV, right? If I use the term of the timeless, OT squared is going to be equal to Tv squared plus OV squared. Right? And this is the diagonal. Okay? Okay? Keep it right. So my tag is the same. Right? So I want to get all V. Right? So here my OT is going to be 25. Remember, your hypotenuse is always the longest side in any right angle triangle. So TV is going to be 20 squared plus. All V squared, so this will give me 625 minus 400. So I'll get 225. So what this means is that all V is going to be 15 units. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah, it's more or less like the previous one. So you can give one more for the statement of the reason, statement of the reason. The answer here three theorem of Pythagoras. Maybe this one could be five. Five months. Four, five months. Do you get a mark for saying in triangle or TV? No. But what did I say is the main reason of writing this? To make it easier for the person who mark your work. In this case, myself, if you are sharing that the marking in the grade, another teacher. Okay, so that it's easier for them to see. When you write metric, your paper will be seen by a stranger, right? And I've been to the marking center for metrics several times. When you get a script, the way the learner answers the questions creates an impression to the marker. And that impression, if it's a positive one, is to your advantage. So if, just imagine someone who just starts writing this and someone who doesn't write it, and you've got many triangles. Who do you think is likely to be more advantaged in terms of perception? So this helps now a lot in terms of helping the person who's math to know that okay, the learner identified this triangle, they use the triangle to solve the what? The problem. Right? Okay. Then 2.2 .2 now. So you are now told that if all P is 16 units, all V is 25 units. The circle has a radius of 65 units. Show that the sum of the chords is 246 units. Okay, now things have changed now here. Okay, this question 2.2 might have a relationship with the other one, or it might not have a relationship. Right? So OP is now 16. Okay, and OV is 25. Okay, the circle has a radius of 65, so that could be 65, and 
that should also be 65. And that's 65. That's 65. Okay? Show that the sum of the chords is 246 units. Now, what this means is we now need to determine the new lengths of RS and what? TU using the given information. Okay? The good thing is we can get those two lengths. Okay? By first I can find RS, then later I can find TU, then I can just add the two. So it's not that complicated. Okay? So what I'm going to do first is I'll say, so we are doing 2.2 by the way. So in triangle, in triangle, uh, in triangle, okay, let me use OPS again. Okay, in that triangle, I know my radius, that's my hypotenuse, so we're going to have OS squared is equal to OP squared plus PS squared. What am I trying to do? I want to determine the length of what? PS. Then I'll multiply it by what? By 2. So this will be a type So OS is 65. OP is 16. Okay, so PS is going to be the square root of 65 squared minus 16 squared. What answer do you get? The whole answer? I put a square root, then I put 65 squared minus 16 squared. Just put that in the calculator and give me the answer. That, that's the length of <laughs> What's the square root of the number inside? 63. 63. Okay. So we have done the first part. Then, then, so we know that RS is equal to 2 times PS. Right? Where does this come from? It comes from theorem 1. Okay? Right, so RS is going to be 2 times 63. Okay, I'm going to write that using a different color so that it can be clearer. So that will be 126 units. Okay? So that, that's the first part. The second part, I'm going to repeat. What I did here, but the triangle is now different. So it's now different. I'm going to use O, V, U. Okay? So, on the next page. Okay. So, so I've identified my triangle there. So I'm gonna have O U square is equal to O B square plus B U square. So that will be sixty five square. That's 25 squared plus VU squared. Okay, what is, okay, so I'm going to say VU is going to be the square root of 65 squared minus 25 squared. Can you give me the answer? 60. 60. Huh? 60. Okay, so you get 60 units. Then, then, TU is going to be 2 times VU. And this is because of line from the center, a perpendicular to point. Therefore, TU is going to be 2 times 60, which is 120 units. Then, 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 sum of TU and RS. It's going to be equal to 
equal to 120 plus 126, then you get 246 units. Okay. And then you are done. I took be more than five, obviously. It was, was it's quite long. I think it is. Right, so if you read the question, right, OMT is perpendicular to AB. So because of the 90 degree angle there, it means you are supposed to use the original theorem one, not the converse. Okay? You are supposed to use the original theorem, not the what? The converse. Right? Now, what are we supposed to calculate? The length of the radius. So here you have to do some construction. You join point O to point B. Okay, let me use my nice lines. Okay. I put some very nice lines. There. Proper lines. Okay, so let me use them. That's my nice yeah. Okay. So I've constructed those two red eyes. Then let's look at the information that, that's given. So A B is 14 centimeters. So that whole length J is 14 centimeters. Right? Then M P is 3. So M P is it's indicated there. Then uh, O M is X. Okay? So if I were to ask you, what would be the length of each red eye? To be x plus what? 3. So we can add here x plus 3. And that is what? x plus what? 3. Right? Now, this makes the question very easy now. All we have to do is determine what is AM or what is MB using theorem 1. Okay? Once you know what is AM, then you can use any of these two triangles by applying what? The theorem of Pythagoras. And you'll be, you'll be done. It's so easy. Because OM is X, MP is 3 units. Okay, wait. wait. But, but, O is at the center, P is at the circumference, so that's a radius. Okay? So, OP is a radius. O B is a radius, O A is a radius, right? So O M is X, M P is three. So the radius will be X plus what? Three. Okay, right? I think generally from my past experience, this is where the confusion comes. You learners, you won't see that. Okay, O M plus M P, they give you the radius, right? Once you see that, it's, the question becomes very very easy. Okay. So the next thing now that I'm going to do is to determine what is AM. So I'm going to do it here. So AM is equal to half of AB. And my reason here, line from center, perpendicular to court. Okay? So AM is going to be half of 14. And this will be seven centimeters. Okay, so I'm done there. And the next thing is to identify the triangle that I'm going to apply the theorem of Pythagoras in. I'm almost done now. So I'm going to choose A O A O M. So A O M. Okay, in that triangle, O A squared will be equal to A M squared plus OM squared, and that's Pythagoras, right? So what is OA? It's x plus what? 3. So we are now doing algebra now, okay? Intrigue, right? Then AM is 7, so that's 7 squared. OM is x, so that would be x squared. Now, this x plus 3 squared, it's a binomial squared to give you a perfect squared trinomial, yes. right? So you get x squared plus 6x 
plus 9 equal to 49 plus x squared. Now, if you're paying attention yesterday, you see that this x squared and that x squared, they cancelled out. So you've left with 6x equal to 40. Okay? So x is going to be 40 over 9. But because we are dealing with the length, generally it's better to leave the answer as a decimal. So outside. What? Oh. Okay. So, as a decimal, two decimal places. Six comma six seven. Six six seven. <laughs> yes. Okay, right. Okay, I'm not done, sorry. <laughs> I'm not done. Yeah. Alright, we have found X. X is not the radius. So, our radius. Oh, oh, to oh, x plus 3, <laughs> which is 6, 6, 7, plus 3, and the final answer will be 9, 6, 7 centimeters. Okay, so that's the final answer there. Please note here for this question, x is not the radius. Please be aware of that. The radius is x plus 3. So is it okay if you get to the traction point? Yes. Okay, it's fine, it's acceptable. <laughs>